The following is an encore presentation of stories from the Duralong Transformation Center. And good morning, Evan Knox here with you this morning with John. Uh, John is John, right? Yep, thank you. Um, normally you have Phil here for your Dura Long segments, but you know, like I said, he's in Mario, England, having a good old time. So I'm here for a couple more weeks. So as my intro has been, you're stuck with me. So deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> John, welcome to the program. Yeah, very welcome to be here. Excellent, excellent. Now, for those of you who are new listening in, uh, our Dura Long segment it talks about uh, the Dura Long Transformation Center, where we hear live life-changing stories from people such as John. Well, it's yeah. been an absolutely amazed where I've been and um, how Duralong's helped us through mm. being off the alcohol and, yeah. and everything. It's a lot, like you said, it's a life-changing thing. Yes. And yeah. I'm pleased I'm off the alcohol and start a new life, mm. you know, a new, new person. And it's absolutely unreal to be where I am today and um, yeah it's yeah. really good alcohol is a silent killer man a lot of people yeah. closet alcoholics are drinking at home alone and yep. hiding it very well but eventually it does take a toll and yep. it does come to the forefront and well I used to yeah. drink at home all the time mm. and, and I got picked up for drink driving which is a silly thing so praise God I, I'm off the grog now over 13 months now, which Amen. is really good. Amen. Well, Amen. let's talk about your story. Where are you originally from? Newcastle. Yeah, Newcastle, lad. Yeah. Ah. Newcastle, born and bred. Born there. and bred. Nova yeah. Castro and go Knights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go to Knights. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been to a few matches up there, which yeah. is good. Yeah, I spent a lot of years in Newcastle. Yeah. Yes. A lot Lovely of years place. Yeah. Mm. Excellent. Yeah. So, born and raised in, in Newcastle. So, yeah. um, uh, obviously, school in Newcastle. Yeah. So, um, was there drinking in your home? Or that, uh, how, how well, my mum and dad never drank. Never drank? And okay. working on the railway when I started there at 17. 17. At Cardiff. Yeah. And, um, Is that where your introduction happened? Yeah, well, that's where I started me drinking. Okay. Just um, lunchtime going down a couple of beers at the pub and um so you're allowed to do that <laughs> you worked on the well, railroad or was that just was that just the norm back then yeah just a normal okay. thing all right yeah, go yeah. down for lunch yeah yeah you know, have a can lunch at the pub mm -hmm. and have about six beers seven beers while we're there <laughs> okay so it went from a couple of six to seven yeah okay, yeah right. we're, well it started that way and sometimes we'd take it back there and drink there and mm. Until we got in trouble, and <laughs> so right. it was a big thing. So that's where it started. It's just a, it's a, 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 a for you a work culture thing. Yeah, um, down yep. to the the pub. I mean, before you started work there, did you drink beforehand? Or yeah, I used to get up in the morning and have a, probably three beers before I went to actual work. Right. Yeah. At what age? Uh, about twenty. Twenty. Yeah. Okay, so three beers before you went to work. Yeah. Six or seven at lunch. Yeah, yeah, easy. And then, and then drive back to work, start work, and then in the afternoon we drink again at the pub, the boys and that. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it was a, a routine thing where we'd be doing mm. all the time, just yeah. constantly drinking, leave work, yeah. pick up a cart and go back to the mates' places, drink and then drive home after it mm. and that. Because it is... It is it is embedded in certain cultures uh, yep. that, that this is what we do. We knock off. We've had a hard day's work. You see it in the beer commercials. A yeah. hard day's work. You head to the pub and yep. all the boys are sitting around. And, and it, it looks like a really good time. Um, yeah. it's, 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 it's what I call false glamour. Uh, yeah. you know, it just looks like a good time. But what they don't show you is, like you said, the, the two or three you had in the morning, the, the six or seven you had at lunch, and yep. then after work, yep. it, it compounds. Um, and then and it, it just grows on you. Yes, you know? it just sneaks up on you. Yeah. When did you first realize you had a problem, or was it you, or was it someone else who said, "Hey, look, maybe you've got a little problem"? Well, if here. somebody else told me, I wouldn't believe them. You know. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think when I got a lot older than that, because I'm nearly sixty now, mm. and I knew I had a problem, and in and out of hospital all the time with vomiting up blood and blood coming out other ways. Mm -hmm of the body and that and um, ulcers and all that mm. and yeah it just got the better of me and I thought well I've got to change my life right you know completely 
and get off this alcohol before it kills me. So how long did you work for the railway? Uh, two when I was about 20, 24. 24. And yeah. still the same thing every day, in yep. and out, drinking. So yep. you were basically a functioning alcoholic. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Yep. Okay. So did you ever run across any problems on the job due to the alcohol? Any mistakes? Any supervisors pull no, you up? Uh, nothing? Just no, nothing like that. No, it's because I always turned up at work. It didn't mm. matter. Lunchtime comes, sometimes I'd sit in the car and and buy a, uh, like a cask of wine and just drink that in the car and have me lunch in the car mm. with one of the boys and that, you know, just sit there and drink and then lunchtime start over, go back to work, do the job and then go home and go to the pub. Okay. It was just a routine thing all the time. Right. Just were you a married young man, were you? Were you yeah, 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 I was married. And at the time? Half the time I'd never come home. I'd stay at the boys' places, just drink all night and get up, go to work and see the... Didn't worry about the missus, you know, because I was more interested in the alcohol and drinking all the time, yeah. you know. And just get lost down the rabbit hole. This is what we do, and yeah. all responsibility other than the job <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sort yeah. of went out the window. See, if wow. I didn't work, like I, I'd need that money need that to money. actually buy me alcohol. Yes, you know. And if I didn't have a job, I wouldn't be drinking. You know, <laughs> getting thirteen hundred dollars mm. a fortnight and stuff like that. You know, the, uh, and I'd probably spend up to six hundred dollars just on alcohol. On alcohol. You know, and. And sometimes I wouldn't even pay the rent because I'd um, be drinking it be all. Drinking. Yeah. And I'd put it all back on the missus. You can pay the rent and all this, you know, and big arguments and fights and stuff like that mm. where it does occur. It must and have taken a heavy toll on your on your marriage. Well, it did. Yeah. You still married? No, no, I'm not married now. How long? How long did it last? And uh, probably about. Two years, two, two and a half years, three years. years. Right. Yeah, two, three children out of it. They're growing up now. Mm. And so they're in and out of jail because of drugs and, and all that, which is terrible. Yeah. I lost a son at 22 through um, heroin and right. that, ice and that, which is... Okay. Um, and that, that turned me to more drinking as well. Yeah. So... Okay. Took a toll. All right. Well, thank you for the introduction. So let's let's cut to a song. Let's let, every, let everybody soak that in, and then yep. let's come back and let's talk uh, second half. <laughs> sure. We just got lost in conversation here. Ninety four point nine, Raven Central Coast. Uh, my guest this morning is John. Uh, is in from the Drill Arm Transformation Center. We're just having a good conversation because uh, we sort of know the same people from Newcastle and. Um, but it's never met. And I'm pretty sure we've been in a, at, at some of the same functions. Because uh, you're, you're telling me you're, you're part Chinese and part Aboriginal. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I'm looking at you saying I wouldn't have picked yeah. that. So My actual m mother and father are actually got a book out. It's called The Five Black Matrians. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so. your relations to Kathy Freeman? Yeah, Kathy Freeman. Yes. Oh. Can you run like Kathy? No, no. No? Okay. No, we no. could always try. Yeah. <laughs> we can yeah, always hope. Yeah. And we can always dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dream is the right. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, so um, let's, okay, we, we heard the first half, um, how, you know, the, the culture of the job um, really was a big influencer on your um, drinking more and more. It just, yeah. it just, it, it passed beyond social drinking. It just became... Uh, graft at a part of your life. Get up in the morning, two or three drinks, yeah. lunch, six or seven, yep. after work, down to the pub with the boys, sometimes yep. all-nighters, never going yep. home, coming back. Eventually it led to the end of your marriage. So, yes. okay, so let's skip ahead to when and where did you finally decide, okay, I've had enough, I need to get help with this? Well, When, when did I, that opportunity come? Well, when I started going in there to hospitals, I knew... I had to do something about my life yeah. because I'm going to end up dying. Mm. And tell us some I, of the medical, some of the medical problems you had. Well, no. I ended up vomiting up blood. Yeah, because of it, I went to hospital, and one of the doctors actually turned around and said to me, "Do you want help because of your drinking?" I said, "I'd love to help. You know, get help." And yeah. That. And he looked on the computer and everything, 
and found out about a place called Jurulong. Excellent. So I actually rang them up and they said you'll have to keep on ringing every second day or third day, So which I did. Why was that? Because I knew I had a problem with my alcohol. No, I meant why did you have to keep ringing every second day? Were well, they full to capacity or? Yeah, because, right. yeah. Okay. Until they got a place for a place me for to it. move okay. in. Just want to clarify that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that was good. And I think it was about fourth or fifth phone call, I said. They said, um, you're ready to move in and come in in a couple of days. And I said, fine. <clears throat> so I ended up packing my stuff and going down to the train station and jumping on the train and there I am, nine months, Duralong. Nine months. Praise God. Had you known God when you first walked into Duralong? Big pardon? Did you know God before you walked into Duralong? Yeah, Duralong? yes. Yeah? I've been baptized in water mm-hmm. down in Sydney mm-hmm. and um, I believe in the Lord mm. and which has been absolutely unreal Amen. to be with the Lord. Yeah. And always have him in my life, yes. I pray, and everything. Did you know Duralong was a Christian-based facility yeah, before yeah, you went? You did? Yep, Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Because even my relations and cousins actually explained about Duralong, mm. that they were Christians, Salvation Army base, and everything. So, Excellent. no, it's really good. Okay. And So you enter into Duralong. Yep. Now, you, you, you're... you're, you're you're dependent upon alcohol. You walk in. Uh, I'd imagine the first couple of weeks would have been a bit of a rough trot. Oh, it was very hard. Yes. Very hard. Yeah. But, uh, sometimes I just felt like packing me stuff and moving out, mm. you know, in a week, two weeks. And everybody said, no, just sleep on it, sleep on it. Yeah. Another day, another day. Excellent. And yes. praise God, we've got people like that there mm. to actually... And tell us to stay there and, and just hang on. It Life gets better, you know? Yes, it does. And, and it does, yeah. Sunday morning comes back. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Excellent. So nine months in, uh, how far do you have to go before you actually enter into your your your, your exiting program? Well, or are you already it, in it? It is coming up. It's coming up? Yeah. And are you prepared I, for it? Are you actually ready for this one? Yeah, yeah. This is your first stint, isn't it? Yeah. 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 And um, I did try a a few years ago Mm -hmm. and and giving it up myself. Mm -hmm. And it was very hard. Yeah. And I tried to cut down on the alcohol, and which it didn't work. I still just still kept on drinking and drinking. Where I was drinking 15 schooners, going to the club and coming home and just sitting up and partying Mm -hmm. all the time. It was pretty well, it's my life, just drinking all the time yeah. and getting drunk and, yeah. So, this life change here was very much needed. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah, because you needed. How's your health? How's My it? health's a lot better now. A lot better now? Uh, non-blood pressure tablets mm-hmm. and that. So, it, um, it's under control at the mm-hmm. moment, so mm-hmm. praise God. Yes. So, yeah, it's... Uh, Okay. It's been a good journey. All me. right. So where to from here? And w- what are your hopes and expectations for the future? Well, I've always wanted to get into nursing. Okay. I've got uh, Miss Tubius for nursing in nursing homes. I've looked after disability children in Queensland mm-hmm. where I drive them around and take them to, like, parties, functions, mm. McDonald's for parties and all that. Mm. And... Uh, and working with older people in nursing homes and that. Okay. So that that's what I want to do. Um, I've got a passion for working like that with people. Okay. Yeah, so I'll look forward to doing that. Beautiful. So how much longer do you have to go at Duralong? I'd say uh, probably a month, two months. Two maybe. months? Okay. Yeah. Well, John, thank you for yes. coming in today. We hope nothing but the best for you. Yes. And, you know, as long as you hang in there, God, man, there's nothing you can't do, bro. Well, that's absolutely true. <laughs> Praise God. Well, except make your own like Kathy Freeman. I don't yep. think he's going to do that one. So, but yep. <laughs> it's already been done. My guest this morning has been John. We wish him all the best. 
And thank you, uh, thank you man. I appreciate it. Yep. Well, Next, and do come back and see us, too. Especially when, once you start working that nursing thing, you come back and you see us and yeah, I will. give us some stories. We'd love yeah, it. I'll You're a champion, will. man. You've been listening to an encore presentation of the Duralong Stories, which can be heard live every Wednesday at 10 a.m. and repeated 8 p.m. Sunday and 1 a.m. Wednesday, right here on 94.9 rima.cc.